Welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, where we talk about complex supernatural subjects, things that are not everybody's cup of tea, but it might be your cup of tea, which is why you're on this crazy channel. And tonight, we're talking about disbelief or doubt about the afterlife and how that crops up even among the best of us and kind of what to do about it or how to analyze that kind of situation. Uh, before we begin, though, if you're new around here, uh, I encourage you to please hit the subscribe button, the big red button down below. You may need to be logged into your Gmail account to do so. Why? Because uh, hitting subscribe keeps the channel active. YouTube has an algorithm in place where if people don't keep subscribing and liking the channel, then they won't recommend my content to other people and fewer people find out about these uh, metaphysical subjects which are kind of important so to continue i wanted to make this video because i i receive emails frequently by people who say they have doubts about an afterlife despite all of the stuff they've read and this troubles them because they've lost people very close to them children or parents or spouses and when they feel confident about an afterlife it helps their mental health enormously, which is a primary reason that I do this whole crazy thing, talking about life after death and writing books about it, because um, I see the enormous psychological benefit it has for people. So that's my main motivation. Okay, so um, I, I could have gotten a degree in psychology or become a therapist. But I decide instead, look, I mean, the root of many people's anxiety is anxiety about death. And when people learn about the objective evidence that people who die are not necessarily dead, um, this provides enormous relief for people. I've seen it transform people's lives. So I, so I think to myself, hey, you know, I'm just going to focus on this. This seems like a, a worthy mission. Now... I'm also an objectivist, so I'm a, hopefully a scientific-minded person. So I don't think it's a good idea to believe in something unless you have darn good reason to do so, unless there is objective truth behind it. And there is with the afterlife. But it's also not good to have you know to be a uh, preacher and have 100% conviction about something because in life and in science, these are not good qualities to have. It's valuable to doubt things. But the afterlife gets tricky because we don't want to doubt that our loved ones still exist. So doubting the afterlife can lead to depression and unhappiness. Um, so how do we approach this type of situation? And that's a good question. Really, um, a situation like this, when you're doubting something that isn't proven to you, I mean, it's normal to do that because most of us who have critical thinking skills, we don't just accept things unless we're able to at least verify it ourselves. It, even many of the closed-minded skeptics, when they have these impossible standards, they want to put life after death in a bottle and be able to analyze it in a laboratory, which is... Well, I wouldn't say it's impossible because Gary Schwartz is kind of doing that at the University of Arizona. But when they have these impossible standards in place, um, really what, they, what they're what they calling out for is their own experiences. So um, many of the people who watch this channel or who are participating in the forums, they uh, have had experiences. And the best thing I can do is look back to the days before before I was having intense afterlife experiences. So I would say this is the, the pre-2014 era of my life. Before I began having out-of-body experiences, meeting with deceased loved ones, meeting with people like my grandmother, and then later on both my parents after they both passed away, uh, going into other realms, meeting deceased people who I was able to verify the identities of here on this world, meeting uh, famous deceased people who I, I was also able to objectively confirm the, the identities of. All this, uh, by the way, I talk about in my books at afterlifetopics.com. 
Um, in the pre-2014 year, I was heavily interested in the afterlife and I, I researched it, wrote about it, but I didn't have a solid conviction. Like it was a strong conviction. I did believe more likely than not something was going on, but I, I, I hadn't woken up from the matrix, so to speak. So I was still plugged in. And I, I teetered between either believing in an afterlife or believing maybe the afterlife is not what we think it is. Maybe there's something else going on. It's something that you know we don't understand. There's a lot of theories like super psi to account for the paranormal types of things people experience. Maybe it's all being generated as an illusion by our collective consciousness. Pretty convoluted theory. But a lot of us who haven't had real experiences, we end up kind of drifting in that direction. So if you've never had an experience and you're just relying on other people's testimonies uh, and you have doubt and it's causing you anxiety, my, my first recommendation is to seek out an experience. You may need to rent a cabin in the woods. And I know this sounds weird, but uh, I would say unplug from social media, from Facebook. If you get two weeks of vacation a year, then use this, use one week of that vacation time to rent a cabin in the woods. Um, talk to your significant other if you have one about it. Um, of course, you can both do it together. If you have an SO who hates these concepts and these ideas, maybe to talk about how, you know, as a way to heal from missing the, the, your deceased loved one, you're going to go on a retreat and you want to do it alone. Uh, so rent a cabin in the woods and um, spend a week focusing on yourself, on your consciousness, on meditation, and uh, attempting to make contact with the other side. And there's a lot of protocols and techniques to do that. But doing it from a relaxed area where you're getting plenty of sleep and plenty of time to self-reflect. And I think, um, you know, and also, you know, practicing out-of-body experiences and things like that. Maybe maybe grab some binaural beats or uh, some Monroe Institute hem sync technology, something that may assist with that. And um, I think there's a solid chance that you'll, you know, once you've, once you've made those conditions correct, uh, then it's much easier for them to make contact. So that's one thing to try, and then when you begin getting the personal experience, it can, you know, really switch things over. You know, waking up from the proverbial matrix. That's my first recommendation. Uh, what is my second recommendation? Well, I didn't think about that before I made this video, but a little uh, secret I'll share with some of you guys. I kind of channel information, so sometimes I don't think about a video. I just start, I just start making it, and all the all the thoughts, all the words kind of come to me. A medium told me I was a channeler and identified who and what I was channeling. Maybe I'll talk about this someday. So that's kind of how I think I always have steam to talk about these topics because it's kind of like I might be getting a little bit of assistance with that. So uh, anyway, so what would be my second uh, answer be about my second solution for dealing with afterlife anxiety? Um, I would say I would say it, consider um, looking hard at your social, cultural programming because the big thing that makes it really difficult to accept the afterlife is that we are programmed and conditioned literally from birth by a culture that purposefully prevents access to this knowledge and I would wager this is done intentionally to keep us in the dark, especially so certain forces have greater levels of control over us. So mainstream science becomes hostile to the very topic. And we have other belief systems and religions complicating the whole situation even more. So understand that the doubt you're experiencing about what is easily a phenomenon as real as gravity or anything else uh, that the doubt is being generated in, externally by forces that are influencing and manipulating your thoughts so again going to the cabin in the woods is, is, is a nice way even if you don't get contact 
a nice way to reflect on what those external sources might be that are um, influencing you, shaping the way you think. And if you can begin breaking out of them, then you'll, you will, um, I think, open up a lot of new possibilities. Um, on a final note with that, I see people take all this stuff too far. And I do that. I see this all the time because I'm also engaged in like in love, love like the conspiracy forums. You see people going off about like flat earth and people just believing anything that they're told. And I've seen some really weird stuff out there when people take the whole waking up from the matrix thing way too far. And they just, it's kind of like they lose their minds. They just start thinking everything and anything is real. This is like a short circuiting issue. And I see it happen when people also take a lot of drugs, you know, so a lot of the potheads and people taking a lot of hallucinogens, they end up with these conditions. So I don't, I don't recommend that. I recommend staying objective, staying a critical thinker and staying a skeptic. But um, also approaching the subject very seriously and integrating it into your life and the big picture and learn about the objective evidence of the afterlife the astral dimension where most of us go to how it is very similar to this world consider what your future is going to be like what you're going to do once you quote die and your long 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 term goals and thinking this way helps integrate the afterlife into your life which leads to better psychological health and um, less grief about death and more ability and more time to focus on your mission in life and what really matters to you to be able to enjoy life to hear this life knowing that you don't have this big um, boogeyman coming after you called death so you un unmask the boogeyman and start enjoying having fun in life and doing cool stuff maybe traveling or whatever uh, so you, it's possible you could you could turn a new page and you know you could be entering into a golden era of your life when all the fun, exciting, cool stuff happens, when all the anxiety caused by things like death or what thought are finally alleviated. Uh, so those are my thoughts. Hey, not bad for, again, a video I didn't um, rehearse. Uh, I just kind of put it all out there. Um, seemed to work again. If you like this kind of stuff, head to afterlifetopics.com. You can check out books like Understanding Life After Death. Recently released The Afterlife and Beyond, formerly titled Understanding Spirit Communication. Uh, that book is a when it comes to waking up out of matrixes and going down rabbit holes uh, the afterlife and beyond is all about that uh, you can get involved with the classes the classes are for patrons and subscribers we have basically VIP content for people who want to help support me so that I can do things uh, afford luxuries while I backpack around Asia like uh, being able to eat food you know it's definitely a luxury kind of keeps the old physical body going while also focusing on ways to expand this channel, expand the group, create bigger projects. So if you want to help fund any of that and be in the, be in the VIP section and do a lot of cool classes, then you can reach out to me and I can um, get you hooked up with that. This is Cyrus. I'll see you on the next video.